Today I'm going to give you some tips on what to look for, how to find morels, what are some of the other indicator species that are out there, and hopefully help you get into some of your own morels. And uh, let's get out there and have a good, safe hunt. Let's go. So the key to finding morels is really take your time. If you find an area that looks like this, a little bit of shade, direct access to the sun, a little bit of greenery, this is prime morel stuff right here. So what I do in an area like this is I'll just take it and walk in a grid and walk really slow. Try to keep my eyes focused, not only what's directly in front of me, but also look out on the horizon. Sometimes they'll stick up. You know, the challenge is, is there's a lot of pine cones around and all the pine cones look like morels. The same color, same shape, a little bigger, but your eyes start playing tricks on you. So if you're in a good area, like I said, take your time, get low, focus on anything that looks out of the ordinary. And, uh, and all of a sudden your eyes will get trained on them and then you'll start seeing a lot more. So you probably walk right by a ton of them until you find your first one and your eyes get fixed on them. And then, uh, and then you got, you got the morel fever. So I'm still waiting for the morel fever. Hoping I'm going to catch it today. Let's go. So as far as terrain goes, this is what we're looking at, but you see this natural little dip here this might have been a road this might just be natural runoff for whatever reason i think the morels like to congregate in these little valleys maybe it's a little more moisture maybe they get a little bit more rain that comes through here but i often see them and if you look up you see we've got a clear view of the sky so they're going to get a lot more sunshine here than they would if they were further deep in the forest so let's see if we're if we're right about this and uh Let's see what we can find, but I gotta, as always, whenever I start morel hunting, I gotta train my eyes to start looking for morels because everything looks like a morel. So far we kind of struck out. We started at 2,300 feet, moved up to 2,400 feet, didn't find anything. Now we're going to a spot, it's 2,500 feet exactly. It's nearly about 100 yards from it here. This place I know has morels. So if there aren't any here right now, uh, we're probably a week or two early. The ground has still got some frost on it and the ground may just not be warm enough to uh, start these morels fruiting, but everything else is starting to pop up now. So it shouldn't be long now. So hopefully we're gonna see some, they might be small. They might not be there, but if they are there, then uh, we're sitting good. So let's go check it out. I don't know if you guys can see this, but some kind of animal's been rutting around in here. Might be, maybe a, uh, a deer or a bear. Um, rutting around for potentially uh, mushrooms. So it's a good sign that there's some activity going. They're definitely looking for something underground. So hopefully it's not somebody out here with a hand rake looking for... For... Uh, truffles that's kind of a big no-no when you do it that way but there's definitely something out here looking for food all right so see this little area here you can see we got some nice moss we got some wild grass going in here a couple of little orchids popping up this is kind of in the middle of a nice dead area where you got a little bit of greenery this is kind of the stuff you're looking for there's a little extra moisture here this would be Pretty prime morel habitat if it's time for them to fruit, if it's not too early. But this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. Any areas where there might be a little extra moisture on the ground that these mushrooms can uh, absorb when they're fruiting. This is the kind of stuff you want to stick to. If it's super dry, like this area here, no good. But look, you got more grasses in here. There must be a little bit of a low spot that the mushrooms will tend to tend to favor. So let's keep looking, see what we can find. Nothing yet. So here's another indicator species for morels. This is a grand fir. And you can tell because if you look at the branches here, the needles grow flat, straight across, and they're a little light colored under, underneath, a little silverish. But the morels tend to favor the grand firs. They'll grow along regular pines too, but 
if you find grand furs, you're, you're in a good spot. It means they're sharing a good habitat that uh, the morels may also enjoy. So I'm feeling better now. Let's keep going. Okay, so we're getting closer. I found our first false morel. Check this out. This is called a gyromitra, gyromitra, something like that. It's also called like a brain mushroom. It's a, it's a cousin of the morel. They typically fruit either right before the real morels do or uh, at the same time as they do. So there's a couple of them around here. We're, we're kind of going down a, uh, we're going down into a ravine here. I, uh, I heard a creek. And so we're just gonna continue to go down this, this slope here until we see the water. And I'm gonna walk along the water. There may be some morels hiding along the shoreline there. Uh, if it's, uh, if it's not, if it's not, uh, to, uh, this is pretty dry, but as we go down the slope, the uh, amount of moisture is definitely increasing. So we're getting we're getting warmer. So hopefully we're going to get into them soon. So let's keep going. Okay, now you see this slope here. This is a nice severe slope. We're in between trees here. It gets a lot of a lot of light, but the ground is fairly moist and it's open. We got a lot of moss and grass. This would be another primo prime spot for morels. I don't see any here, but I marked it on the GPS because this will eventually be a good spot. So if you see something that looks shroomy, mark it on our GPS and come and check it in a couple of weeks because uh, this one's going to be this one's going to be money here in another week or two. Okay, so I'm starting to see signs of life that are uh, that weren't here a week ago. I'm in a spot here that I was scouting. Right now we're I don't know, we're like 2,400 feet, I think. Hold on. 2,512, to be precise. And last year, last week, last week, there weren't any of this plant right here. This plant here, these are wild strawberries. And when you see wild strawberries, you know that the, at least here, and in my humble opinion, the morels are not far behind. Last year, this was the spot that I found my first morels. And I couldn't have been more excited. If you saw that video, I was like a kid that just struck gold. It was awesome. And I remember this little area. Because if you look here, there's this little trench here. There's a nice little area here. A lot of, a lot of greenery here. This is like an awesome spot. It's just beautiful all by itself. But last week, the ground was frozen. There weren't any strawberries that popped up. Strawberries now. So I'm going to take some extra time in here and uh, really look around and see what we can find. But that's that's a good sign. Strawberries are popping up. I remember this little, this little divot here. I found, I don't know, half a dozen that... Uh, weren't there until I just got low like I am now and started looking and they were popping up. Well, I think we're going to call it a day. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips and tricks. It gave you on how to find more else, even though we didn't find any. Um, I think we're primed to go find some you know, in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully the weather's going to going to give us some, some rain. I know we don't say that a lot in Oregon, but uh, hopefully the weather's going to give us some rain and then these morels should stop pop start popping. Uh, along with the porcinis in another month and a half, they'll start popping up in these same areas. So if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, and I look forward to taking the next adventure with you. Thanks.